Rebuilding a model steam plant, part 17. Working on the aluminium anodized cladding, enlarging the exhaust pot and other holes, starting with the cladding for the Stuart 10V, using a very unorthodox method that works. Curling the edges of the Stuart S50 cladding and shaping it to accurately match the cylinder before fitting it in position. This clip is from the last episode and I'm drilling the holes for the drain cocks on the Stuart 10V. And after this, the engineering becomes non-engineering. To finish the exhaust port holes and the drain cock holes and move them into their final position, I'm going to use one of these. I have a few of them. They are mini drill grinders. They're very cheap and they're fairly rubbish. And in this case, they are 100% sacrificial. Well, no, that's an exaggeration, maybe 95%. With the grinder in the chuck of my bench-mounted Proxon Minimot drill, I'm able to enlarge the holes in the aluminium cladding without doing any damage to the cladding. I cannot recommend using a large twist drill. I need this hole to come out at just over a quarter of an inch in diameter, and I simultaneously need to move the hole into the correct position. There is no possible way that I would fit a quarter of an inch diameter twist drill in a drilling machine and hold the cladding in my hand to drill the hole. Plus, I'm simultaneously moving the hole into the correct position. As you can see, the operation makes a bit of a mess of the grinder, and here I'm using the grinder, and in this clip I'm using the same grinder, which is now quite worn, to start off the holes in the 10V cladding, which will fit around the drain cocks. For these holes, which are much smaller, I need something a little bit more pointy. This grinder is only the right size right at the tip. So sparing no expense, I'm changing the tool for a different shape grinder. As I mentioned earlier, these small grinders really are very cheap and cheerful. I have various small tools that could do this job, but these are by far the best because they are so controllable. Here are some quick tips. Do not use a twist drill. Do not use those type of burrs that are really aggressive. And do not use a milling cutter under any circumstances. If you're an expert engineer watching me do this, possibly by now you're banging your head against the desk. And I have a tip for you. Please don't write in, just continue banging your head against the desk. Look, I've just broken this grinder. They are very fine and very weak, but they do the job. I wish I had some diamond grinders of the same size. I found this round one, which is precisely the right size, that I need in the cladding for the drain cock holes. As you can clearly see, this diamond tool is far more aggressive and it removes just the right amount of metal but does leave a slight burr. However, this is minimal and very easily moved away by my fingers. When doing this job, you really have to be careful not to catch any part of the cladding other than the hole on the cutters. To enlarge the exhaust hole in the Stuart 10V's cladding, in this clip, I'm using a slightly coarser grinder. But the shape of it has been changed by the aluminium as I do the job. And here, for a bit of variety so it doesn't get too boring, I'm using the other grinder to enlarge the exhaust hole in the cladding for the S50 steam engine. I forgot to mention though, doing it this way, there is a bit of a trade-off. The aluminium gets very hot very quickly, so I have to keep stopping to let it cool. But it's more than worth it, these grinders give quite a good finish to the hole. Even though the holes are a bit tapered, I will correct that in a later operation. Please keep watching. What I'm doing here is rolling the edges of the cladding to fit to the S50, using a piece of silver steel. To finish off the holes and make them look good and be parallel, I'm using a reamer on each one of them. This is a 5 16ths of an inch in diameter reamer. Ideal for the exhaust outlet to give a little bit of clearance around the edge. And for the drain cock holes, I'm using a 3 16 reamer. And here it is in action. This makes a really neat and professional job of the holes in this very fragile material. Here's a Stuart S50 awaiting the cladding. For some reason, one viewer asked me, 
Did I use round files for enlarging holes? Well, the answer would be yes if I drilled the holes in the wrong place. I'm far from perfect, and I do sometimes drill holes in the wrong place. But not in this case. This cladding is a carbon copy of the original cladding from this engine. If there was original cladding for this engine, why am I making some more? Well, I used the original cladding for the other engine that I bought, the more modern Stuart S50, and the holes in the cylinder on this were in exactly the right place, exactly the same as on this one. Now I need to make a minute adjustment to the cladding to make it fit perfectly around the cylinder. What I'm doing is making it fractionally slimmer. Why didn't I compensate for this earlier? Because I prefer to do it now, once the cladding is finished. I'm in my other workshop where I also have a Proxon Mini Drill, and it's fitted with a drum sander, which I'm using to remove a very small amount of metal from one edge. After the drum sander, I use a needle file, followed by using a piece of very fine wet-to-dry sandpaper to smooth out the edge. I did this both to the S50 cladding and the Stuart No. 10 cladding. And now I have a brand new cladding set to fit to both of the engines. The cladding is more or less perfect. It's not scratched because I haven't had to hold it in either clamps or machine vices, just my fingers. And all I need to do now is fit the cladding to the engines. I'm going to start with the S50. And yes, the holes are drilled in the right place, as can be seen here. First of all, I securely bolt the flat part of the cladding to the top of the cylinder. Then very carefully indeed, I bend the cladding around the cylinder. Are the other two holes going to line up? You'll have to wait to the next episode to find out. And after this cliffhanger ending, I'd like to say stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.